Right, the next task is to do some work on the actual Pico turntable. The hole that they use there to run their plastic bearing through is not good enough for us. So we have to fit a bearing, which has got an 8mm outside and a 5mm inside. To that extent, we want it to be a tight fit. We ream out the hole in the turntable with a 5 16 reamer, which is slightly under 8mm, which is what I will now go ahead and do. Right, I've now reamed the hole and there's the bearing and that goes in from the underside and there's a nice tight fit into the hole. I have to use two hands to push it in. So that's the bearing pushed in and there we go just sticking not stick doesn't stick up above the surface. Right so the next job then now is to drill four holes at 90 degrees apart to mount the actual under frame of which I'll show you one I've done earlier so you can see what it's going to end up like. So as you can see that's one with it already fitted and we have to pick up in four positions for the holding under frame. So I'll use a jig for doing that. Right, this is the jig we use and there's a couple of marks and those line up with on Pico turntable if you find it you'll find that there are two there and two on the opposite side there. So we drop the jig in lining up with those marks near as we can. And then we take a 2.5 millimeter drill and drill through in the four places shown on the jig itself. Which I will go ahead and do. Right, I've drilled my four holes, which you can see on that side. So we can now just drop out the jig, we shan't need that anymore. The next task now is to each of those holes we have to countersink them, otherwise the rotating part will rub against it. Countersinking of the holes is done with a countersinking tool and very carefully by hand is turned by hand and checked and checked and checked and checked until the countersunk screw is a nice flush fit. And I've already done one of those holes, which is that one there. You can see the countersink. And just drop the bolt in. And you can see it fits nice and flush. We have to do that on the other three now. Right, that's my four holes done now in countersink. That's the only mods to the grey, grey? Fawn coloured base unit or well. Now would be a good time to turn over and to fit the copper pickup strips. Uh, this is as per Pico instructions. Right, that's my two copper strips fitted and tabs bent over and the big tabs left slightly proud ready to solder the wires on at a later date. And that's the blocks that take the bearings that go on the end of the turntable and it's two per table so that's enough to do six so that's quite a nice print and all cleaned up. Our next job now is to pop them off and tap the holes out to take the bearings. That's the next thing we'll do. Okay, once we've done the UV curing to thoroughly harden it, we have to do a little bit of work with a file. First job is to 
file that area there because there's a slight ridge and then file on that surface there there's a slight ridge which I'll do. So now having cleaned up both surfaces we now have to tap the hole and we run by hand a small two millimeter tap through the holes which I will do. Next task is to prepare the bearings that will support the turntable and they are two millimeter diameter inside by six on the outside and we pass a two millimeter socket screw through each of those and with a two millimeter nut on the end as I've already prepared. We will now fit those to the parts that we 3D printed earlier on. Right, I've added mine in now. Next we need to do is to add just a small bit of super glue onto the ends of the threads where they just poke through in the four locations just to lock that in securely. The next part we have to do is to modify the actual track part which we've just built consisting of three parts, base, two sides and the centre part. So I've already glued those together as per the PICO instructions but we don't fit the final bearing on top of there. We leave that open as it is shown there. So what we've got to do is we've got to turn this now into one of those with a shaft on it. So what we have to do is to enable us to fit this particular part here, get it around the right way there, we obviously have to machine some material off of there. If I turn that one sideways, you can see how it goes. So we have to stick it in a milling machine and just mill a slot so that that will then snugly sit onto there. And then we do the same with the other end at that end. And then once we've done that, we can then glue the 52 millimeter four mil shaft in. And again, that's done in a milling machine to make sure it's perfectly upright, uh, which I will show you in a moment. Right, so we're all set up in a milling machine now. And this is where we have to remove 11 millimeters from the end. And we have to machine down to a level with the bottom there. That will then allow this part to be located into position. So we'll go ahead and we will now machine that away. And we've just machined all that away now and just kissed the bottom. So that we're going to allow this part here, which I'll just drop in so you can see. Let me just wind the head up out of the way. Right, that then allows this part to go into that position there. And we will super glue that in. So I've now got to go down to the other end and machine the other end away. All right, that's the machining done both ends. And then it's quite a simple case of dropping them in. So it's a nice snug fit. There we go. And then we just have to super glue that in position and super glue the one at the other end. Right, that's my end now suitably glued on. Right, we now have to glue in the pivot pin. Uh, this is 52 millimeters long, four millimeters diameter silver steel. And on the end, we just touched up with a grinder to give it a serrated finish. This will then be glued into the hole and held upright in the milling machine or drill press to make sure it is upright and we use a metal loaded epoxy to glue it into the hole which we're going to do now. 
The glue I use is a rapid two-part epoxy which has got metal added into it. Now it's quite critical that this shaft is upright in relation to the turntable base. So we set the shaft into the head of the milling machine. I'll just try and see if you can see that. Right, and then we will put some glue around the serration we we'll then put some glue in the hole and then when we're lined up we'll then drop it down on the quill feed and then we'll lock it off in that position and allow two to three hours for the glue to set. That will ensure that the shaft is at 90 degrees to the rotating part. There we are, I've got epoxy in the hole and on the end of the shaft. And then we're going to force the shaft into the hole. Obviously excess glue will come out. And we push that all the way down as far as you go. And then we lock off. And then we clean off the excess wet glue before it goes off. Right, there we go, that's the, the base, uh, there's the shaft, and I think we can honestly say that that's quite a success. So that rotates nice and easily. And is level. So that's the major mod done to the turntable. What we've got to do now is to carry on with the Pico instructions and fit the pushers with the springs to make the contact and slide the rails in. Right, blue spacer, inlays, big hole facing out and we're going to remove two millimeters from the end. In fact, it's 2.5 we take off and then just with a, a light file, going to remove the sharp edge. Right, that's the edge radius to now take it out, turn it round so we then have the small hole facing out. Right, now set up for a 50 degree cut. Drive across, uh, just put a slight chamfer on the end. Leave the top so we've got a little bit of a flat surface on the top and don't cut down into where the thread is. And that's the chamfer put on there. Can now remove it, that piece is now complete. We don't use the grub screws in the bottom on the bigger hole so they can be removed, but we do use the two grub screws on the top where the smaller hole is. Right, motor lead comes too long, cut the length to 140 millimetres and then we fix the molex on the end. I will do the colour coding when I put the end on. Right, that's the cable length cut to the correct length and the molex put on the end. This gives you an idea of the colour coding from motor end to Molex end with the raised portion facing up towards me. Won't do any damage if you get it around the wrong way, it just means the motor won't run correctly. Now we'll move on to doing the sensor. Right, this is wiring up the sensor, standard opto sensor, wires come too long, need to be cut to, as can be seen, 80 millimeters. And now we'll put the Molex on the end. When we come back, I'll show you which pins go where. That's the Opto wired up. Again, you can see the colour coding, the Molex at the end and the notches facing up. Alright, this is the cable that goes between the copper contacts under the Pico turntable to the little PCB. Cut them to a length between 100 and 110. Two-way Molex on the end. Polarity is a material as this goes to the DCC on the rail. 
the other end, barbed wire is ready to solder onto the underside of the Pico turntable. Right, these are all the parts needed to construct the mechanic turntable side. Just run through them all. Got the base plate, you've got the four uprights that bolt on to the bottom of the turntable. You've got your PCB, which has to be assembled, soldered up. Two bolts, four nuts hold the PCB onto one of the side pieces. The four countersunk and four nuts are two and a half millimeter. They go in the four holes on the turntable and go into the tops of the uprights. Eight two and a half millimeter posse drive head. They go through the bottom of the main circle and pick up on the bottom of the uprights. Obviously the motor is the motor, we've already wired that up. The actual turntable itself, we've already assembled that in previous video, putting the pin in and ball races on the end and modifying that. Over here we have the lead that goes on the copper contacts underneath the turntable with the two pin Molex which connects to the PCB. You have the Opto wired up. That's held on with two Phillips or Posse Drive 3mm screws, 3mm nuts and washers. Again you'll see that when we're building it. There's four socket head screws. They hold the motor in position. Then you've got the universal coupling which connects the motor shaft to the shaft on the turntable. And then you've got a collar and the collar fits underneath the table. It's underneath that part there and pushes the actual turntable part itself down onto the copper contacts. And you've got the Opto chopper. This combined with the uh, locating spacer and the universal coupling bolts onto the shaft and the motor shaft and the slot cuts through the Opto and tells the system where home is. So that's it in a nutshell. So we will now assemble all of that. Right, this is the PCB that goes on the actual turntable table itself. All the holes are 0.8 millimeters, excepting for the big ones, which are drilled out to three millimeters. Hole size is wrong in the previous video. In fact, the Hole sizes for the RJ45 want to be 0.8. The ones for the Molex want to be 1. And for the two there for the blue connector want to be 1.2. And 3 mil for the big ones. Also in the previous video showing the layout of the turntable parts, the actual blue screw-in part was missing. That's the PCB that goes on the turntable now complete with the RJ45, the connector that goes off to your DCC input from the track, and two four-way Molex connectors and a two-way Molex connector. The next task is to clean up the residue flux and to give the bore a coat to seal it. Right, we're now going to fit the universal coupling, the chopper wheel and the part that locates it all together. Now the universal coupling consists of three parts. There's two ends and a rubbery middle part. The ends have different diameters. We want the larger diameter we want to take the coupling apart. They're quite stiff. If you wiggle it and move it, you'll pull it apart. And then you've got the, the rubber insert, which will also come out. Put the rubber inside to one side. So you've now got your two ends, of which one's small and one's large. We need the large one, because that's the fit that goes over the motor. What we have to do is to glue all this together, but we've got to make sure that it's all perfectly flat. So to do this, we put the chopper plate on, doesn't matter which way up it goes. 
The four holes are to line up at a later date if you have to take the motor in and out. So that will fit down smoothly and tightly onto the boss of the motor. Then we take the end of the universal coupling, which has got a Allen screw in the end, and that lines up with the long slot, as you can see, on that part. So that will slot into there. And you have to make sure that you can get your Allen key in, which you can. And then we drop that over the motor. And to make things a bit simpler, where the slot is there, if you also make the slot there roughly in the same position, and that should sit down smoothly and snugly onto it. So you then push the outer, the thicker piece of MDF down onto the disc, and then you're able to push down the actual coupler itself. So that's how we've got to glue all that together, but we've got to use two different types of glue. We use a PVA glue for that part to that part, and then we run some super glue around the coupling to the wood. So the first thing to do is to actually glue the two pieces of the wood together. So now that we've got that in the right position, we can gently raise it off. And we'll find that that's a smooth surface underneath, it's all flush. So we can now add our PVA glue. Shall I just get ready? We use PVA for this part because if we do get any glue oozing out and touching the shaft, it means we'll still be able to take it off and on. Where if we use super glue and it oozes through, then it's a permanent fixture onto the shaft. And we certainly don't want that at the moment. And spread it around. Drop it on again, check that they're roughly in line with each other. Push down, push down on the actual wood itself onto the chopper disc. You do this with the coupling as that centralizes everything. The screw for the coupling should still be aligned so you can get it through the slot. Don't worry if it has moved slightly because we actually haven't glued that in yet. So once that's done, leave that for a couple of minutes to dry and then we can move on to doing the super gluing actual coupling in itself. Right, now we need to glue the coupling in with it tightened up on the shaft. That way everything is then aligned perfectly. So keeping pressure down on the coupling. We do up the screw. It needs to be done fairly tight. And then we take some super glue and we run the super glue around the edge but try not to get it where the slot is there so we just come around all this side round here so I'll go ahead and do that Glue should soak in and wick down. Right now, the it needs to be left to dry. When that's dry, we can disassemble it, take it off of the shaft. Uh, which we'll do in a moment. Right, my glue is now dry, so I can now remove 
unit, slacken off the screw, and it should slide off quite nicely, quite easily. So that's the chopper disc all set up, ready to use. Now the videos that follow that show the rest of the construction of the turntable will in fact show a different universal coupling, as this is the later version, which is far superior. So the next thing we have to do though, obviously, is put it back together. So if we slot in the small part that goes in between, don't push it all the way down. And then you can add the other one to the top. Also, we do this after the glues are all dry. And we set it with a small gap, maybe two millimeters, not pushed all the way down. And you'll find then that's the correct height when we come to install it into the unit. So please remember, videos that follow will show a different type of universal coupling. Right, while we're waiting for the glue to dry on the coupling and the motor, we'll start to assemble the other parts. All right, to fit the Opto, you need to have the writing, so you can see the writing, and the Opto goes onto that position there. And we use the Phillips screw or posse drive screw round head and one washer through one of the slots. Bear in mind that you can actually see the writing and read it up the right way. Drop them into the hole and just spin a nut underneath. This is three millimeter. Do the same on the other side. One screw, one washer into the hole. And then you spin the nut. And position him so he's midway in the slot. And then using a spanner or a pair of pliers, hold the nut and just nip up the screw. No need to over tighten. The plastic's quite flexible and will take up any slop. So that's the opposite sensor in position. The next part we have to fit is the motor. So hopefully by now your glue will have dried, in which case you should be able to slide them off. Slide off the packer, we don't need that, we can now throw that part away. So this is the part we ended up with. So we've glued the two pieces of wood together and we've super glued the actual coupling in. So that's a nice fit onto there. One side. And we can now fit the motor. Now it's important where we fit it so that all the wires line up. So the way to do it is if you set the motor with the wires facing me as I am there and then this wants to go on in that location like that so that the actual sensor is at 45 degrees to that point there. And then we use the socket headed screws three millimeter which will go into the holes on the motor and when they just nip just go around and put another little turn on them maybe a, a quarter to a third of a turn let's double check each one just confirm how you've got the leads laid out. Next stage is to actually fit this particular piece on. We have the screws which we'll pick up on the flat. We lower it down so it clears the sensor and then about halfway down the sensor you're able to rotate it slightly. At this point you need to go in because we're now obviously lined up with the flat on the shaft. And with it resting on the sensor for the moment, 
just give it a few turns until you feel it start to tighten on the shaft. Then the object now is we've got to set up the chopper wheel so it goes between the slot. So we've got the same distance above and below so it's not actually rubbing on the sensor itself. Quite easy to do. So we back off. Only a touch because we want to keep in line with the actual flat on the shaft. So we move him up a little bit and then just nip him up again. Have a look and then rotate him round so I can come up a little bit more. That's better. So as you can see the actual gap I've got here, I'll bring it up into focus. There we are. Just see if I get it right, you can just see my hand through. That's the gap we've got. So it's there we are. So it's just running through and is not touching the actual sensor. Having got it in that position, we can now tighten up that one screw fairly tightly. But again, we're not holding up the fourth bridge. And again, a last minute check. So that's the motor in and the sensor done. So now we can start to build up the rest of the construction around the outside. Now, before we move on to the next section now, it's best to solder on the actual wires that's uh, going to pick up the power and feed to the turntable. Otherwise, it's a bit difficult getting into that area, uh, which I will now go ahead and do. It's a very straightforward job. Just solder on to each one, slide some insulation over, and then that job's done. Right, that's my two wires soldered on and some heat shrink slid over so that keeps them insulated and gives it some mechanical strength. Right, the next part we're going to do is to assemble the four uprights, which is a pure nut and bolt job, so we don't need any glues. This is done using eight two and a half millimeter bolts or Phillips head bolts and two and a half millimeter nuts. The way the system works is you've got your base and four of these, and you'll see that there's a little X marked on them all, and there's a little X marked in the location. So it's X to X, and you'll find it slots in, and it slots in so that the slope goes out. I'll just explain how the process works and then we have a bolt that comes up from underneath we'll go into that slot and into there we got another slot where we drop the nut so I'll just assemble this so you can actually see the principle so we end up with that principle there bring it up into focus so you can see the nut holds itself in while you tighten the bolt up. So it's a bit fiddly to do, but it's a system that seems to work quite well. So we start off making sure we've got X to X. It goes into the slot. Then a bolt up from underneath. And then we feed a nut into the slot. Hold it between your fingers and then the screwdriver just loosely tighten, tighten up and we'll do exactly the same on the next one. Again, get the nut up into the slot, hold it between your fingers just do them up. And not tight at the moment, just to, just to nip it, hold it in position. Then we move on and do the other three exactly the same. It's a bit finicky because with the motor everything's a bit top heavy. We've got to do it in this order. Uh, 
because that's the way the system goes together. Well, that's my four uprights were in position. I'll just make sure you've got them around the right way, that they're all facing out. So all the axes should line up on the bottom. Right, so we now move on to the next section. So now we're going to fit the PCB. And the PCB can go in any of the four places, but it's important which one it goes in. So again, have the wire from the Opto facing you, and it actually goes on to this particular beam here, and it goes a particular way round. As you can see, it lines up with the holes there. So it's that one there. So the first thing we have to do is to put the bolts in. So they go in from that side with one nut first, which acts as a spacer. And you do another one underneath. And we tighten those two up. Again, using a spanner or power pliers, whichever you have available at the time. Again, we're not holding the fourth bridge, just sort of secure. Then take the PCB, drop it over the two bolts, as I've shown there. So the black one is facing out. And then drop on the two captive nuts. There we go. Now you may not better get a spanner in there, or if you can, you can drop a spanner on top and use it like a box spanner and just tweak those so they snug down nicely. That's the PCB in position. We won't connect anything up yet. Right, so let's move on now to the next stage. Now for the next stage, just a little bit of explanation of why things are done the way they are. So you need the part that we've just done, the part we made earlier with the shaft and the roller bearings on the end, and a blue spacer with a 45 degree angle on it. Obviously when this goes in, it goes through the hole, and as you know from the, the Pico it's got the little spring contacts underneath there, which run on the slip ring there. So that drops down onto the slip ring. Now if you look carefully and put your fifth fun one finger there and one underneath, you can squeeze it. In fact, if you use two hands, let's bring this up so you can see it. So I can stress it effectively. So I'm pushing down on the turntable gray bit and on the buff bit, I'm pulling it up. You can see that it's moving up. Now, because we've got ball races out on each side, we can actually pull those tight down together and it will still rotate really, really easy. So that's where this part comes in. So we slide him with the taper on first. And then we push him down until we fill the gap. Not for not all the way, you want about a, say a millimeter there. And then you just tighten up the blue one. Just nip him to start with. And then have a, a look and a feel. Make sure that you can just slightly stress it or slightly flex it. Look on both sides. And if that looks okay, then you can go to the other nut, or not the other nut, the other um, key the other side and knit them both up. Do 
is quite tight. The next pair down we don't need, so you take those out because this is an, an adapter. It's got one size hole one side and the bigger hole the other side. Obviously we use the small side, or the taper side. So we take them off. And again check, and you should find if you just hold the turntable gently, it will rotate really smoothly because it's running on ball races on the outside and also got a ball race down the middle. It also means you get good contact on the slip ring inside. So we can now move on to the next section, which is assembling this part to the actual part that we just built with the four supports. Right, for this part, you're going to need all the bits you've got left over. So we've got the part we built, we've got this turntable with the blue ring fitted. You'll need the four countersunk screws, which are two and a half millimeter, and the four nuts that go with it. Now the method of fixing the turntable top to the chassis is the same method as we use to hold the two pieces together. It's a single bolt, in fact goes through the countersunk holes, there's four of them, it picks up on the slots in the top there. Now it's important we put this on in the right position because it's quite critical. We have, I'm sure you're aware, there's a dead spot where the slip rings cross over. So we've got to set that dead spot in line with where the optosensor is there. So that means that when we turn on the unit and it does its zero check to find out where it lives, it does it at the dead spot so that it doesn't affect how your trains run. That will become obvious when we come to set it up later on. So to do that, make sure you have the opto facing you and the board over in that position. And then on the turntable, on the Pico ones, there's a small indentation on like that raised area, which let's see if you can see it. There it is. Got a small raised area there, and there's a small raised area there. So when the turntables, I've got it now, is lined up with those areas, that's the dead spot. So we need to leave them in that position. And if you turn over, the wires want to come out so that as we turn it over, they're coming out towards me. So we've got it in that position. We've got our bottom one with the wires coming out that way, and then we hold the whole turntable and we turn it slightly so that the track now is in line with the opto coming out. And you'll see that that hole and that hole will line up with that member and that member and the same over the back. So then we lower it down and as we lower it down we've also got to engage the shaft into the universal coupling. So it's important to have made sure that you've actually undone the screws in the universal coupling. So I'll tilt it up so you can see what we're doing. So I'll just tilt it, you can see, and then we come down into the universal. And as we slide it down, make sure this wire is coming out in the direction I've got shown there. And as you drop down, you'll line up the holes with each support. So at that point, we now need to fix it in position. So we use a two and a half millimeter countersunk. They go into the four countersunk positions on the turntable and they will drop down into, you can see it there. All we have to do is put a nut into that area again. So we do exactly the same as we did on the bottom. So we go around and do that in the four locations. Right, I've got all my four in. Now you need to go around and just back off the ones in the bottom. Just sort of half a turn so they're a floppy fit. And you've got the top ones which are a floppy fit. So the actual pieces are quite easy to move and float around. It's got to find its own level now. So with it flat on the table, first thing is to get the top ones done. So if you just grip where the nut is either side as I'm doing there 
and then just while sort of flexing a little bit just start to tighten up that screw there and then turn around and do exactly the one opposite again just move it around a little bit while you're tightening up just nip it in position and then this one with the board on not so easy to get to but you can do it and then the one opposite again fingers underneath just move it around a little bit and nip him up and then go back to where we started a little bit more of a turn on and the one opposite And the one opposite. So that's now fixed the turntable to these pieces here. So now we need to just, obviously it's all still loose. So we now need to just tighten up the ones underneath. So again, just let it find its own level. Do the opposite numbers first. I got to, so I'll just whip around them all again. Make sure they're tight. Right. So we have, still haven't connected the motor to the turntable yet. So now we can just spin it around the finger and you should find it's really, really smooth. But of course, nothing is happening underneath at the moment. So now what we have to do is, again, put it back to where we were, which is the cable from the sensor is poking straight out to me. Bring the turntable round until it lines up with those indentation marks that we had there. And now we can actually tighten the turntable down to the motor. And to do that, we tighten that screw which you can see there which is the coupling to the shaft so again just check that's lined up that's lined up and just nip him in position if you've got t-handle keys it obviously is a lot better nip in there And obviously what I forgot to say is you've got to make sure that the slot for the optocoupler where there we are also has got to line up with the opto and then the turntable wants to line up with the two dead spots so that's all in line with each other now so now I can just nip up that screw and then rotate it and nip up the second screw. Don't have to be a gorilla, just a, a nip at the moment. And now we can rotate, and there should be no tight spots as it goes round. And you can see from underneath that we're now rotating the under parts and therefore the motor as well. So that's all nice and smooth. So we can now tighten up properly the screw that holds the coupling to the motor. That's that one. Or not the, the coupling, the, the part that holds the coupling to the top part. So that's now onto there in the correct position. So now we can actually connect up the various sensors. It's obvious where the two pin one goes, that goes into the top. It's got two indentations, you can see. They line up with the indentations on the back. Just pushes over, you can see it goes down on. And then the other two, you can get them around the wrong way, but it's so important to get them around the right way. So what we do is we fit the opto one first. Now the opto goes to the bottom one, so it's, it's the one that it's closest to. So again, four wires, four connector, 
got two indentations on it as you can see they go towards the back that slides down over there and then we bring the motor one up again four wires same connector indentations on the back and that goes to the top one so that slides in so that's connected up there and just make sure the wiring is out of the way of anything that's moving which it should be there you have your turntable mechanics ready to use you've got two connectors one is an RJ45 which looks like an internet connection it's not an internet connection please do not connect it to your internet because you will do damage to this to the motor and to your internet it's a bespoke design for connecting this part to the actual control electronics above that is a two pin screw terminal which takes the power to the slip rings to power up the turntable so you would take those two off to your track for your DCC or if you're not using DCC however you're going to feed your power into it you have to read about the Pico system on how to do that so that's finished and completed that part so we now move on to the next section which is connecting this up to the electronics box making sure it all works and then going through the setting up procedure calibration on how you use it